what is good y'all today we got justin bieber in my chair it's like nah i'm just playing but today we are going to be transforming this man's life with a super trendy mullet with some texture so let's get into it man we're going to come in with our two guard open and just deep walk the area we're going to be doing um our taper um and i'm going to call this a taper but this is going to be slightly higher than what i would do a normal taper um like because i am doing a mullet so it has to go just slightly behind the ear or at least in this case i am right so i'm deep walking with that too being sure not to take it up too high and now i'm going to go ahead and establish my bald line right where the ear connects to the head and where the eyebrow is and you'll see i'm going to exaggerate that round shape because i want to keep the edges of this taper dark so now i'm going to come in with my trimmer to bought it out so i'm coming up right to where i created that line letting the weight of the trimmer do the work i don't want to cause too much irritation and now we're going to go ahead and follow it up with the shaver and this is just to get it slightly closer to the skin and add some longevity uh to this blend and you'll see i'm holding the ear out of the way so i don't take it up you know too high or nick his ear in any way because the shavers can't cut if you you know move them in a weird way so now we're going to come in with our shaver lever open and you'll see i'm going to stretch out this blend a lot so i'm going to go up about a finger's width really maintaining that burst effect and you'll see i'm utilizing the corner of the blade in order to give it that burst shape and I'm detailing it, making sure that I have a nice clean guideline. And reason being is because I want this to be nice and organized. So I'm going to come in close to get rid of that line in between. And then you'll see me open up that lever little by little. And I'll tell y'all what, man. These JRLs have been super clutch, super fire for me in the past, I would say, two weeks is what I've used nonstop. And they do not disappoint, let me tell you. So now I'm going to come in lever open with that one guard being consistent still doing the same thing maintaining that same shape and just moving up little by little and you'll see why i debarked with the two before doing the taper that's because he had a lot of hair to work with and i wanted to be able to tackle this you know with a nice clean foundation so now i have that one guard closed and i'm lightening up the line in between the open and one open now i'm gonna grab my half guard lever open and i'm gonna do the same thing attack that line and as i uh work at it if i see it's not getting rid of it i'm going to close the lever just as i did until we get it completely blended still working with the half guard as you can see the taper is coming together very nicely i'm feeling confident in the process thus far and now I'm going to go back to the two guard, right? Because originally when I used the two guard, it was just to debulk. It wasn't to establish where I'm going to stop with the taper. It was simply to get the hair out of the way. But in this case, I'm taking the two guard up to where I want the highest point of the taper to be, which is a little below the parietal ridge and slightly behind his ear. So I'm coming in and I'm flicking out as I come up with that two guard. And now we're going to blend down to finish this blend off with our one and a half open. And just like we did with the half guard, we're going to close that little by little. And slowly but surely, you'll see this blend come together. And that's what it's all about, man. Trusting the process, sticking to the process. I'm talking about in life and with the haircut, right? You got to trust the process, even when it seems like it's not working, that it doesn't make sense. right? Because a lot of times, I think the mistake people make is they quit too early. Right, you have to stick around long enough to see if it will work. Right, I heard a quote that said it takes a lot of faith to leave a situation, but it also takes a lot more faith to stay there and allow God to work. And that's what we're doing, man. We're allowing it to work, we're giving it its time, being extra detailed, and trusting that process. So now I'm gonna go ahead and line up his arch, starting at the top of the arch, then going in the bottom and meeting those two points in the middle. So now I'm detailing with the corner just a little bit more. And that blend is looking super nice, especially after we transition into the length there on the sides. And now we're going to do some clipper over comb to go ahead and blend into the sides a little better. And with clipper over comb, it's always slightly choppier. So you'll see I'm coming in with that comb and flaring out slightly. 
and that's to get the initial blend there but to go ahead and soften everything up i will follow this up with my thinning shears so i'm coming in with that comb flicking out being sure not to dig into it because i want to maintain that darkness so you'll see the thinning shears will really soften up any choppiness and make it look a lot more fluid and a lot more consistent so i'm coming in with that comb flaring out giving it that wedge shape that's what's going to maintain the weight at the top of the taper and then we're going to use our thinning shears and this thing is coming together very nicely and now we're going to do the other side and you can see the difference already man his hair is hanging over his ears over like it's super long right just like the other side was but that taper really gave it a more modern clean look so we're going to come in with that two guard and deep walk and we're just following that same exact system but I do want to talk to you guys for a little bit, man. I just came back from Dallas. Super fun event. I got to teach my first class at a barber expo. Um, there was about 200 people there. So that's definitely the most people I've ever taught at once. Um, it was an overwhelming experience. At the same time, a super fulfilling um, experience as well, right? Because I had mentioned something at the beginning of the class. That there's certain moments that you hit in life that kind of confirm that you're aligning your purpose and doing what God has called you to do. Um, and the fact that I had the opportunity to do that, um, especially this early on in my career, I was super grateful um, and just blessed and humbled by the opportunity. So if you were there, it was great meeting you. Um, if you enjoyed the class as well, man, head down to the comment section. Let me know what you thought about it, where you could do I, I think I could do better um, and all that. You know what I'm saying? But there will definitely be more classes on the way. But while we're talking about classes is if you guys enjoy my YouTube tutorials, where i teach and walk you guys through haircuts um i got some exciting news i will be dropping an online academy it will be subscription based as of now but what it will consist of is way more in-depth tutorials that'll be live so i'm not doing a voiceover after the fact i'm talking as i do it i'll have a videographer so the quality will be even better it, it'll give you the feel that you're an in-person one-on-one -on -one experience right that was my goal with this class and as well, there will be advice on, on clientele building, growing on social media, building relationships, and all of that. So if that is something you are interested in, head down to the description of this video and press on the link that is labeled Clipper Hands Academy and enter your email, right? And when you enter your email, you'll be put on a wait list and you will be the first notified when this academy drops, which is super exciting. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I believe it's gonna bring you a lot of value and a lot of information that could really take you to that next level, man. So if you guys are excited with me, again, go to that description, hit that email, enter your email. And we're going to go crazy with this academy, man. But we're still working on this taper. We're using our two guard and we're kind of just freehanding and deep walking around the ear. So two guards actually establish what my highest point of the taper will be. And now we're going to start blending down. Same exact process as the other side. And now what I'm going to do is grab my half guard to go ahead and finish off this taper. So I'm starting off open and then gradually closing that lever until we get this line completely blended out. And I got to give it to this guy's hair, man. It blends really nice. So it's, you know, it's very easy to do on this hair texture. But some people do require a lot more detail. But we're just working with the half guard, bringing it together, making it look super nice and super clean. And now to frame everything out, we're gonna go ahead and line up his arch starting at the top and then going to the bottom and using the corner of that blade to create that curve. And having those two reference points, the one at the top of the arch and the one at the bottom, helps me prevent from digging into that area too much because you don't wanna push that area back to where when it regrows, you know, it looks crazy. In some cases you have to, but in this case he had a pretty nice arch. So I wanted to make sure that the top of the taper was a little higher. So I'm coming in with that three guard and I'm just coming off the shape of his head using my comb as a stopping point. point. 
And now to really transition into the sides, I'm gonna do some clipper over comb, coming in with that comb and flaring out slightly. And then any hair sticking out, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of with that lever all the way open. And now to soften everything up, make it look a lot more fluid and a lot softer, we're coming in with that thinning shear, same with the clipper over comb, flaring out, giving it that wedge shape that maintains the weight at the top. And then any hair sticking out, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of. And I like to use the thinning shears, especially for stuff like this, um, because it allows me to maintain the shade of darkness or the weight at the top, which is super crucial when doing blends, especially into long hair. Because what it does, it cuts in between the hairs, right? It's not cutting it fully. It's cutting in between while at the same time adding texture and just making the hair basically thinner so it can lay and blend better. And now we're working a little behind the ear. And this taper is looking very nice. I think it fits his head shape very well. Now I'm detailing with the corner. And now we're gonna get into the trim, man. And the trim is really gonna bring this haircut to life. It's gonna allow his hair to not look as flat and have more volume and texture. So I'm dampening his hair, getting it, you know, wet because when the hair is wet, it's a lot more manageable and easier to section and work with and allows for a nice even cut. And also it shows all the hairs that might potentially overlap the taper. So I'm coming in with some scissor over comb to go ahead and get rid of those as well. Now after we completed that, we're gonna go ahead and start with the trim on the top. And I'm gonna go ahead and begin by establishing three sections, one on the right, one in the middle, and one on his left. And for a reference point, you can start in the back of the crown and work your way forward to the inside of his eyebrow. And then the portion that matches the inside of his eyebrow um, will be the middle section and the left and right will be, you know, the other sides of them. So I'm making sure that that section is as clean as possible so that way we can stay nice and organized. And now we're gonna go ahead and lift up that middle section to use as our guideline or our reference point. And we're gonna be taking off about an inch and a half, right? Because with the mullet, um, specifically, right, you want the top to be slightly shorter than the back. So that's what we're doing right here. Nothing drastic. I don't want it to be like super Joe dirtish, right? I want it to be more modern and clean and more consistent. But having the top shorter um, is, is really what a mullet is, right? If it was all even, then it really is more of like a burst fade. So you'll see I'm point cutting the guideline. That's because I want this hair haircut to be super textured. So I'm point cutting instead of cutting straight across to give it more of that te textured look. And I'm following that straight back. And I'm cutting in a straight line. I'm not angling the hair in any way because I want to have that nice squared shape that complements his head. Because I don't know if you guys can notice on his jawline area, it's really round. So to go ahead and combat that, I think a square shape will fit his head a lot better. So now after we establish that middle guideline, we're going to go ahead and take horizontal sections moving forward. And as you can see on the inside of my finger is what we cut with that guideline. And we're bringing everything to that length. And I'm working horizontally, which basically means side to side instead of front to back. And I'm point cutting those as well. And that's going to allow the hair haircut once it's dried and has product in it to look way more lively and not so flat, essentially. So you'll see I'm taking a, a small section once again. No more than a finger's width. You don't want to pull up too much hair because if you over direct too much hair in a certain direction, it's going to cause the hair to be very uneven you know it'll be longer in the front shorter in the back or vice versa and that is something we do not want and now we're just going to move forward and do the same exact thing
So now we're finishing off towards the front, making sure everything is nice and even across. And you'll see I'm staying focused, staying clean, not trying to get overwhelmed with the hair. So now we're going to comb that all over towards his right and then reestablish that middle section and comb that over towards his left. So we can do the same thing on the other side. So now you're going to see me take horizontal sections and we're just staying consistent, man. We're applying the same system, the same process throughout the entire haircut. So right there, you can see towards the end of my fingers is where the guideline is. And now we're just going to bring everything to that length. Super simple, super easy. We're not overcomplicating it in any way, shape or form. And I can already tell just by how everything is coming together, how I feel throughout the entire haircut, that once this is styled, um, it's going to come out clean, right? Sometimes you do a haircut and while you're doing it, you're not sure if you're going to like the end result. But then sometimes you do a haircut and throughout the entirety of the haircut, you just feel confident. You feel at peace. You feel like everything's working. And in this scenario, I had that, right? And when you have that, it's a great feeling. It's definitely not every haircut. You don't feel confident. Um, with the result of every haircut but with this one i kind of just knew right if you've had that experience drop it down in the comments man let me know and if you notice every time i pull up the hair i'm adding tension which means i'm pulling tight but not too tight right to where it's like pulling on his hair i want to pull it up tight but kind of natural because I don't want to over direct the hair up either. I want it to be at its most natural state. So that way, you know, when he styles it every day on a normal basis or his hair naturally wants to lay, I want everything to be as even as possible. And if you guys just noticed, I grabbed too much. So what I did is comb out a portion of the hair I grabbed up and basically just shrink the size of that section because I had pulled up the front as well as the section I have on my hair right now which is way too much because that would just leave the front longer than I wanted it to because I over directed it backwards you know what I'm saying so now we're finishing off the front right here and as you can see that guideline is still visible and we're just matching everything to that So now after we complete the top, we're just going to go ahead and comb everything forward. And I'm going to start in the front and work my way back just to make sure everything's even. So we're going to comb it all forward. And then I'm going to go through one more time to make sure we got every single, you know, hair while still point cutting. Right. So as you can see, as we're working through, it's pretty much even, especially when point cutting. The point is no pun intended to cause little you know portions of an unevenness that cause that texture but you don't want anything drastic right so that's all i'm checking for here and now we're going to comb all those hairs forward and we're going to go ahead and raise where the hair sits he wanted it you know pretty flush with where the top of his arch is so that's what we're going to do here and the reason i want to do it with scissors is i don't want to give him an edgar right i want the front to be slightly softer so that's why I'm going ahead and point cutting the front and we're just working our way towards his right and then we'll go towards his left. So now we're doing the same thing here. Just minor cuts, nothing crazy. We're not taking, you know, the fringe really high. We want to keep it fairly low while at the same time giving it a more sy symmetrical look all the way through. So now we're going to go ahead and get into the back trim and with the back trim what i want to do is just comb all the hairs down resaturate it to get ready to go ahead and create our sections and i know for the me the back was always the hardest when i had to do scissors on the side or the back i would get lost right because it's just a weird angle but i'm going to show you exactly how i tackle this so just like i did with the top i'm going to go ahead and establish my guideline down the middle 
and one thing i wish i would have did with this cut is as you can see i'm kind of cutting the guidelines to the shape of his head i wish i would have pulled straight off of the head to maintain the weight at the top of the mullet um but that's a mistake i'll correct later on but in this case i kind of rounded it out um which caused the top to look uneven from you know the bottom half of it but once we styled and textured you really couldn't notice but that's one thing i would have done is pulled straight off of the head to give the illusion of it being all even so we're just working through making sure that this guideline you know is as even as we can make it and that's what it's about man it's not it's not about being perfect as a barber it's about making mistakes and recognizing that so that way the next time the client sits in the chair you can go ahead and you know take the cut to a whole nother level and do better than you did last time right that's the goal i don't know ever claim to be perfect that's why i wanted to share with you guys a mistake that i made but i'm going to show you what i did for this specific cut and what i would change you know the next time i cut his hair but we're working all the way down to the nape and since the nape is shorter we didn't have to cut off as much hair because again we're giving the illusion that it is even while it is not so right here we're coming straight off the head and we're just taking a portion of the guideline we created in the sensor and moving towards his right side So now we're just combing everything down in place. I'm going to show you um, how I trimmed the other side as well. So you'll see I'm taking sections starting from where I stopped with the taper. And we're trimming everything to that desired length that we established with the middle. Trying to stay as organized and as clean as we possibly can but as you can see right there if when you look at where the occipital bone is compared to the top of the crown you see that the unevenness there that was caused by me not pulling straight off of the head but instead rounding it but i'm going to show you later on in this trim how i went ahead and saved that so as you can see i'm, I'm taking those diagonal sections on the back of the head and i'm bringing everything to that length Staying real clean, real consistent, not trying to get lost. As you can see, we're just working our way towards that middle here. And every time we pull off of the head, we can see, you know, the guideline and the length we need to cut it to. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. So with the back, I was having difficulty point cutting while trimming it. So I went ahead and trimmed it blunt, which was basically straight across. And I added my texture after the trim. So as you can see right here, I'm just trying to even it out because I cut it the way that I had told you guys. What you'll see is slowly but surely it's starting to come together. It's starting to look more finished, more polished, a lot cleaner. Boom. And now we're going to go ahead and even out the bottom of the nape with the rest. So I'm taking those, you know, diagonal sections here as well. As you can see, when I comb it, everything is nice and flush. But I'm going to go ahead and through and make sure that everything is even. And that's how we finished off this side of the bag. But as you can see, man, it's laying nicely. We went ahead and got it right. But what we're going to do is go ahead and dry it before we style it and finish off the back. And I'm just drying in its natural direction, kind of giving it, you know, some volume going towards the back, allowing the crown to lay as it naturally would. Not trying to force the hair to do anything it won't, right? So now I'm going to clean up behind the ear just a little bit. I'm not going to bring that all the way down to the nape. 
because again with the mullet you want to keep it as natural as possible but now we're kind of just framing out the haircut putting those little details on it but you can see what adding that texture did even before the product the hair looks a lot more lively not as flat and now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side and this thing is coming together very nicely i think it came out clean if you think it's coming out clean so far go ahead and drop that down in the comments clean up behind the ear just a little bit and i'm starting to like the pieciness on the bottom of his nape area but what i like to do to clean up the neck just slightly is lift all the overhanging hairs and get all the baby hairs that kind of get in the way or make it look not as clean we're not putting a hard line on it right we want it to be soft but we want to get rid of those vellus hairs is what they call those same thing on the other side and what cutting under the hair will do is allow the hair to lay over it looking a lot more PC. And now we're point cutting the nape area to add some texture and more consistency throughout. And now we're going to go ahead and polish it with the finishing style. So right here I'm using my volumizing powder. And this is going to give it more of a dry natural look before we come in with our clay. But even with this powder you can see it already start to bring the texture alive. And now I'm gonna go ahead and cocktail it with an indestructible matte clay from Tomb 45. And this is gonna bring out all the texture. We'll go ahead and piece everything together, give it that final look. But this is more of a worn hairstyle, so you wanna make it look as if he didn't try, well at the same time, did try, right? That's the go. But that texture is really coming through, looking super clean and super fire. So now I turn the client towards the mirror, went ahead and pieced up the top and the front, bringing out that texture a little more. And my man is feeling himself, haircut is fire. I think it definitely came out clean if you think it did. Let me know man, this is how my client came in looking. And this is how we left leaving, from Justin Bieber to the modern mullet. Listen, if you watch this video all the way through, I appreciate you guys. And like always, hit that like and subscribe button. But also make sure to hit that email and sign up for the Drake Clipper Hands Academy coming very soon. A lot of value and a lot of nuggets. I will see y'all there. Peace. What is up, guys? Welcome to the Clipper Hands Academy.